Hello everybody, Mike here at Game from Scratch, and a couple weeks back, an Apple announced at their Worldwide Developer Conference that they were deprecating OpenGL. And I think this is a move that almost every developer out there said, ugh, that's awful. But we never actually talked about what the alternatives are to using OpenGL. OpenGL actually had a special place in the graphics library ecosystem because it is currently the most cross-platform option there is out there, especially if you extend it to include OpenGL ES and WebGL. And coincidentally, yes, OpenGL ES is also being deprecated on Apple platforms. So this led to the question, well, what now? What should you do? If you want to support future versions of um, iOS and maybe macOS for some reason, what graphics API or library or framework should you use? So that's why I've put together this quick guide. Basically, we are going to look at what the alternatives are to using OpenGL. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, first off, I have done a text-based version of this. I will link it down below. So if you want to go through the, all the references I gave, they are all going to be available there. So let's jump in. Your first option, and if you're already using a game engine, you are completely sheltered right now. Uh, the following game engines all currently support Vulkan. Um, Unreal Engine supports it. Uh, Unity Game Engine supports it. Lumberyard Engine supports it. On top of that, um, Stingray Engine from Autodesk actually supports Metal as well, but unfortunately, it is currently being deprecated. Now, there are a number of game engines out there that don't support it, such as Godot, uh, Cocos 2D, etc., and they're trying to figure out what their migration, migration path is going forward, and we're still waiting to hear from a couple of them. A lot of them are going to be working with Vulkan, and there are some options there that we will cover in a second. There's one other game engine that also supports it, and you may have heard about it a bit on this channel lately, Armory. Uh, yeah, the Armory game engine already actually has a metal back end. And the reasons behind that we will see in a second. So if you're using one of those game engines, and there might be more that I missed, if there are additional game engines that currently have, um, are both not just on Apple platforms and have a metal back end, please do let me know in the comments down below and I will add them to the article at least. Uh, but there are other options as well. As I mentioned earlier, Vulkan is one of the choices and that's because of a product called Molten VK. And Molten VK basically is a technology which is now open sourced on GitHub which enables you to run 99% of Vulkan code on um, Metal. So basically, it's a translation layer for you, so you can support those platforms as long as you target Vulkan and have this intermediary layer in between. Now, I don't know what that 1% it doesn't cover is, and I don't know what the workflow is personally like. So I can't tell you what this experience is like, but I know a number of game engines are considering using Molten VK as their way forward. Um, especially if they currently have a Vulkan renderer in uh, effect or already implemented. Now, other options is to use a low-level rendering framework. Um, this is especially true if you're working on a 2D game, but there are also 3D backends, including the one we're looking at right now, that enable you to actually um, target as many platforms as possible. Now, this was actually mentioned in comments recently, so you know who you are if you see this right now, um, which actually led me to make this actual video. Uh, BJ, BGFX is one of those libraries I can't believe I haven't actually covered it yet. I actually still sort of think I have and I just haven't found it yet. Um, but this is a cross-platform graphics API bring your own engine framework style rendering library. Basically it takes care of the low-level rendering stuff and leaves the rest to you. And it does it in such a way that it supports just about everything as you can see from the tags here. Vulkan, DirectX, Metal, OpenGL, DirectX 3D 9, 11, 12, GLES, WebGL, Graphics well, graphics programming is a little generic, uh, but this is a cross-platform rendering library. So instead of working with OpenGL or Direct3D or Metal, uh, you could use BGFX and let it take care of all the things for you. Um, I'm lazy, so if I was making a game engine today, I would probably take the BGFX route. Now, BGFX is not the only option in this regard. There is also code. Again, we've been talking a lot lately about the Armory game engine. Well, the reason why Armory is able to target all of those platforms is because it is built on the Ka framework. Now, I recently did a What is Ka video. I will link that down below as well, too. But Ka itself is a media library, a lot like SDL, um, and it's a cross-platform, low-level functionality framework for uh, the Hacks programming language. Well, underneath Ka, the magic that makes Ka able to provide its magic is another library called Core. 
Now, Core is a low-level C library, uh, and that is what is providing the rendering support for all of these different platforms underneath. And if you go to Core, you will find, again, obviously, I'm on GitHub here. It is an open source library, and it is capable of targeting Direct3D9, Direct3D11, Direct3D12, OpenGL, Vulkan, and Metal. Um, so this is ultimately the library that is being used underneath the Armory game engine, and the reason why Armory is so cross-platform. So definitely check out Core if you're starting a new project for right now. And the nice thing is being C, you can bind it to just about every programming language under the sun. Now this next one kind of straddles the line. Ogre, um, Ogre 3D is actually a renderer. Uh, it's been around forever. It's open source, C++ based. Um, it's almost a game engine. You know, if they just provided, I think there is even a scene graph to be honest. So if they provided a level, level editor, physics and audio, uh, this would basically be a game engine. But as it stands right now, it is a rendering framework. But the cool thing with OpenG, uh, so Ogre 3D, sorry, is that it is exceptionally cross-platform and also it has a metal backend. So you can use Ogre to, to, to target Windows, Linux, OS X, Android, iOS, JavaScript, Windows, phone, uh, sponsored by Microsoft because who else would do that? Uh, Windows RT uh, also was ported to the PS3 and Xbox 360 for a number of titles in the past. So it's got a very portable backend renderer and one of the renderers available is um, metal based. Next up we have uh, the Forge. Now the Forge sounds really cool and I actually only discovered it while researching this video. So I can't tell you much about it other than the fact that what I'm reading in front of you. Uh, obviously it's open source available on GitHub. It is a cross-platform rendering framework for PC, Linux, uh, ray tracing, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Xbox, and PS4. Um, so that's most of your major targets. You do have a metal back end available as well as a Vulkan back end. So you could do molten DK or you could go ahead and use metal. So the Vulkan is still under development. Now, the thing I don't know is how mature this guy is because it actually only started development. Oh, uh, let's see back in, uh, went too far. Like early this year, I think it was. So this guy hasn't been around for a long time, but there are a number of rendering examples out there. This is definitely a library I'm going to look at more. Yeah, so it just launched January 31st, at least to the public. So I have no idea how good the Forge is. I don't know if any of you guys have ever actually worked on this one. Please do let me know what your experiences have been in the comments down below. Otherwise, when I get a couple of spare cycles, I will definitely check this guy out and share the results with you guys on this channel. And the last one I have, there's a reason why this is a search query. I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked, and I cannot confirm 100% that there actually is an SDL backend, but there seems to be a lot of other libraries like Skia and others that actually are using SDL to provide a metal rendering layer. And there are a number of forks here, as you can see. There's this one from still water and this one from Gazorin uh, that are SDL metal forks, but neither of them have been updated in several months. Um, so I can't comprehensively tell you if there is actually a metal back end for the SDL framework. I, I assume there is. SDL is kind of ubiquitous with cross-platform. SDL is kind of underlying technology for things like 2D graphics, windowing, input, etc. for almost every single Linux game ever made. And it is also the low level um, technology used by a number of game engines to provide their 2D functionality across platforms. And it's also used for setting up uh, 3D context, which is why I'll mention it in this list. So I have to imagine there's a metal back end there and it looks like there's metal back ends in there, but I never comprehensively found one. Um, so again, if you could confirm to me that um, SDL actually has a metal renderer, uh, that would be awesome. As it stands right now, there are a couple of work in progress ones for sure, but I can't tell you if they're production ready, if they've been abandoned or anything else. So really that is your option. So basically option number one is use a game engine that currently has support or keep an eye on what other game engines are doing. I think a lot of game engines were migrating towards the Vulkan uh, rendering API and via the um, Oh, what the heck is it called? Uh, Molten VK. I think you're going to see a lot of people go that particular group, especially now that Molten VK has been taken in by Kronos Group. And Kronos Group is the people behind Vulkan and OpenGL. So I think a lot of engines will probably go that route. I, I don't see it being worthwhile to do a metal renderer dedicated on most platforms, which is part of why it sucks that Apple went this route in the first place. Uh, but that is the case. Now, there are 
other options that uh, I haven't mentioned in this tutorial. Um, you could also write a metal renderer. Uh, if that's your thing, there is the option. Uh, there is a great deal of information available right here on their page. Uh, I'm not going to bother going there, but there is a link to it. They've just released Metal 2. They've re released improved developer tools. But again, you're in the Apple ecosystem then, and you're writing towards their walled garden. And in your, my opinion, you're also doing something horrible for developers in general by going along with what Apple's doing here. Now, obviously, if you're a big industry, uh, you know, if you're Unreal or EA or you've got the resources to create the best render for every platform, but I think every other developer should do option number, I don't know, what is this, E, F, whatever, is stick with OpenGL and tell Apple to stuff it. Now, that actually may not work out. Who knows? There are kind of a couple ways that could go. All they've done right now is deprecated OpenGL. It's not gone. So you can continue to use OpenGL um, on Windows, sorry, on uh, Mac OS and on iOS products. Now the problem is Apple has this uh, tendency to basically push their updates down people's throats. So once iOS 12 comes, that's when the full-blown deprecation takes effect. And that's when you'll no longer you'll no longer see new support. And I'm wondering what will happen with um, new platforms. So when a new um, version of the iPad or iPhone 11 comes along, is it going to just drop support completely? H hard to say. I can't imagine that because they will just break backward compatibility for thousands and thousands and thousands of products. But there will be no more new development. So as new functionality, new features are added to OpenGL, Apple products are going to stay further and further behind. And eventually, Apple being Apple, they could just turn off support. So it might be a matter that you're going to have to decide, do I support this Apple platform or not? And I don't know. Something about caving in and making your renderer an Apple because... Um, Apple wants to, def sorry, in metal because Apple wants to defend their walled garden. It, it just sits wrong with me. This is a bad move and we should not be giving into it. So those are your options, at least as far as I saw them. If you've seen other options for OpenGL, and of course, again, keep in mind, before I get a whole bunch of comments about this down below, sticking with OpenGL is certainly an option, 100% an option. Just know that you're going to have eventual platform issues on the Apple end of things, and that might be 100% valid. Uh, but if I've missed out on other options that are cross-platform, and um, you know, provide the same kind of functionality as you know, a Direct 3D, a Metal, a Vulkan, an OpenGL, etc., or a cross-platform framework like uh, BGFX or um, Core. If I've missed anything, any alternatives, please do let me know in the comments down below. Now, there's a couple that I did leave out. For example, there's the Banshee engine has spun off into its own framework, and that framework is a cross-platform rendering framework. It just doesn't specifically have a Metal backend, but it does have a Vulkan backend. Backend, so you could use it with Molten VK. So there are other options that support just Vulkan, but I didn't put them in this list just to try and keep the list as concise as possible. But do realize, as long as a framework or a renderer has a Vulkan backend, that Molten VK is certainly an option. All right, that's it for now. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that this is even a issue, but you know what? It's one of those things we need to consider. So thus this video. Hope you guys found it useful, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.